So welcome to the video that you didn't want. Yes, it's the Mr. Sally's weightlifting video. Well, one person requested this. Oh, I'm so excited. Here is my mini Olympic bar, the final piece in my jigsaw. And uh, look, I'm gonna warm up doing some curls just so that I don't bust my arm. Once upon a time, I ripped my bicep right off the bone. I know you don't want to hear this, but there you go. Ripped it clean off, uh, getting on a ski lift. It was spring loaded, I held onto it and said, you're not going away, and it said, well, I think I am. And I said, no, and pulled it back. But unfortunately, my 22 stone of ski clobber went straight through my arm and ripped to the bicep clean off. Anyway, here I am in my basement, having my first weights workout in about four weeks. And you probably know I have been desperate to go snowboarding over Easter, which is cancelled. Uh, so about two, well, no, maybe three months ago, I started big time lifting on my legs. I don't really bother with the upper body because that makes you heavier. And that's a disaster for snowboarding. But hey, snowboarding is not on the horizon. So, well, I can start lifting. I can't tell you how much I enjoy weightlifting. I know it's childish but sometimes you meet a sport that's just made for you and weightlifting is my thing. I've really missed it. So now would be a good time to tell you how I got into weightlifting in the first place. Back in 1977, when I was 13 years old, you couldn't really find a bodybuilder. You certainly wouldn't see one in the streets. And in the movies, the biggest person probably was Christopher Reeve, who played Superman, or Johnny Wisemuller, who played Tarzan. Um, bodybuilding was not a thing. In fact, it was a sort of an underground movement that people who were very weird did, and you avoided them in the street. But in 1977, when I was 13, an explosion happened. And that was the first big Schwarzenegger film, Pumping Iron. This was way before, I'll be back, get into the chopper. It was a cult movie letting the general public know about this bizarre subculture. Now, I've got the original, well, not quite the original book based on this. In 1984, I'll show you bits of it as we go through this video. Gold's Gym was the centre of the bodybuilding universe. It was Venice Beach, Los Angeles, and it was basically just a shack. The equipment was homemade, but the people who trained in there were enormous. Now, the sad thing is, Hollywood stars now use so many steroids to get big for their movie roles in superhero films and what have you. We've lost the shock of the massive. But when Arnold Schwarzenegger first appeared on the planet, he looked extraordinary. It was like Godzilla had just arrived. Although in those days, bodybuilding wasn't just about becoming massive. It was about sculpting your body to become, if you like, like a massive made by Michelangelo. I know that's slightly ironic looking at Mr. Potato Head train here. Um, I never had the discipline for bodybuilding, but I discovered I had a gift for power. So bear in mind that I've not deadlifted. This is a weird homemade, this isn't an exercise you do in the gym, by the way. Um, but the last time I deadlifted properly was, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. Uh, but I've kept a lot of residual strength just because of the training I did in my early life. It is a little known fact, even in my own household, that I used to compete in strongman competitions, pulling cold trunks and lifting barrels of beer and all that sort of stuff. Yes, I was Swindon's second strongest man, but I was the only drug-free strongest man, and I still am drug-free, although not very strong. I'll put up here a horrible graph that shows you the testosterone drop-off as soon as you start getting past the age of 25. But here I am, 30 years later, pumping happily away, look. Anyway, if you're at all curious about the origins of bodybuilding, I'll flick through my 1984 copy of Pumping Iron at the end of this video. So, for now, you can see me struggling away. I filmed the whole workout so that you can see how brief it is. The whole thing took me about 30 minutes, and I guess there's about 10 minutes of activity during this. Um, I'm taking it quite easy, despite what my face is suggesting, because I don't want to injure myself. 
Um, I may show you the scars on my arm where I had to get the bicep rebuilt. I've also had a ridiculous um, chest injury. Once upon a time, I used to be mega strong until my chest ripped. Yes, it doesn't sound like I've had a lot of success with my body, really. And that's before we get to the snapped Achilles. But that's ageing for you. Uh, the good news is, of course, our wonderful NHS put me back together again. And uh, I hardly had to fight at all to get them to do it. Although the first consultant I saw when my bicep had uh, become detached said, well, you're not a PE teacher, are you? Well, what do you need an extra muscle for in your arm? All you've got to do is write on the board. At which point I detached my arm from its socket and beat him around the head with it. No, don't worry, that's just a metaphor. In fact, a reference to an Arsenal Schwarzenegger film. I think it was called Commando. Speaking of which, you'll be glad to know I am wearing underwear in this video, despite the fact that my shorts look remarkably like a skirt. I do apologise for this. Now, you may be wondering why I'm working on my biceps, having started on my biceps and then worked on my back. And the answer is simple. Your small muscles are the ones that are most likely to snap. And so I've warmed them up through the back workout and now having pre-exhausted them I can afford to lift slightly lighter weights on the biceps. If I'd gone straight in on the bicep workout on its own I would have been tempted to whack the 25 kilo plates either side of the 15 and that would have just been all ego. This is ambitious early door cleaning. Yeah my wife is Push. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'll be able to do it. You'll be alright. I'll have to do it outside then. <laughs> You're recording me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can cut it. Yeah, that's fine. Right. <gasps> <gasps> I didn't even clean it properly, and now everyone's going to look at me. That's the problem with you. So now you've seen that I've got no headroom, I'm having to improvise here. I've never done this exercise before, just made it up on the spot. But that's the joy of lockdown. And it puts me back with my roots. When you went to a bodybuilding gym in the old days, everything was pretty much homemade. You didn't have machines that were designed by multinational companies. Basically, the gym owner went to somebody with a welder and said, look, I want a piece of equipment that does this. And somebody built it. It was just great. So the ancient Greeks invented strength athletes and they had a myth about the origin where this guy basically picked up a bull. And because bulls put on several pounds every day and he just picked the same bull up every day, he developed immense strength. A ridiculous but charming image, but nevertheless, it's true. That's the only way to get stronger. You just keep lifting more weight. You don't need fancy machines, but you do need to shave your armpits, Mr. Salis. Not that I ever do, but I didn't know I was going to make a video. Also, I didn't think my power belly was going to come out looking quite so rotund, but there you go. I hope you're enjoying my pink wear here. When you're down to 50% testosterone, you find yourself becoming feminized in interesting ways. Yes, I'm a deeply caring and sensitive individual. Now, if you're curious, I like to do about three exercises per body part. This is the second one on shoulders. Shoulders maketh the man used to be the same back in the bodybuilding days. You can never have shoulders which are too big and uh, consequently just enjoy. Again, You'd never see anybody doing this exercise in the gym, but you've got to improvise. That's the joy of gymming. Now, one of the weirdest things about filming yourself is that you're able to see yourself through a wide angle lens, which accentuates everything in the middle of the frame. And then as you move away from the middle, makes everything look smaller. So I'm not actually quite this blimpy, I hope. But the great thing about being on lockdown is that I'll be able to look at myself doing this again in a couple of months' time and see whether I've lost weight or I've turned into a giant human blob. Which will it be? It's really easy to kid yourself in the gym that you're working hard. And the way round that is to set some goals. I write down everything that I'm doing so that I can look back week upon week and month upon month 
and make sure that I'm pushing myself. My wife, for example, who now does Joe Weeks every day, finds herself working three or four times harder than she ever did in the gym because on in the gym she just got on her phone and you know pootled about and told herself that she was working hard because she occasionally built up a sweat but really she didn't she's much fitter now that we're housebound so the other part of the routine that you want to develop if you're interested in such a thing is doing some kind of resistance every day so this workout I'm doing back, shoulders and a bit of biceps. Then tomorrow I'll probably do chest and triceps. And the day after it will be legs. And here is the recovery food that Harry's cooked me. No carbs, just the big fat steak. Actually I'm not really a big massive fan of steak but there you go. So here is the front cover of Pumping Iron and that's not even Arnie on the front. This is the best poser at the time, the person who could pose best in competition. There's an incredibly camp photograph. At the time that this was produced, most people assumed that men who were interested in their physiques in this way must be homosexual. That didn't bother me. I come from a family with lots of homosexuals in it. And here's Arnie squatting with about 180 kilos, which actually makes him a bit of a wimp in real terms. I was actually just as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger, which my students always used to laugh at. But back in those days, bodybuilders didn't take that many drugs. Whereas now, stars take them even to play a role like Wolverine. This is Franco Colombo, only five foot four, miles stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger, but obviously never as famous. Although Arnie did make sure he got a part in lots of his films. So Pumping Iron also follows the amateur competitions, the Mr. Universe, and those bodybuilders were actually bigger than Arnie, but they didn't have the proportions. There were rules about how big your biceps should be compared to your calves, compared to your neck, compared to your wrists and so on. And Arnie, probably still now, has had the most aesthetic, the most perfect physique. Now, because of the nature of the drugs that athletes use, they become really bloated, they develop the most absurd bellies that are kind of barrel shaped, and they've lost that sense of aesthetic appeal. The sport has lost its way, what can I tell you? So I've no idea whether the book's still in print, but you can still get hold of the film. And you should download it. You've got time on your hands, haven't you? Pumping Iron with Arl Schwarzenegger. And this is the guy on the front cover, but this time with his clothes on. And don't you love the 1970s outfits? Coming up, this is Mike Katz. He, as I said, was bigger than Arnie, but an amateur. He was actually a primary school teacher. Imagine rocking up as a seven-year-old and having this guy teach you. Now, one of the things I love about this book and this time frame is there were probably only a few thousand bodybuilders anywhere in the whole world. Like Sean Connery, who was one of the first James Bonds, actually started life as a bodybuilder. And he was tiny. There was nothing of him at all. There was a kind of wonderful innocence in those days. Oh, look at the 70s fashions again. Nobody had implants, although the rumour is that Arnie did have implants put in his calves because he couldn't make them grow. This is Eugene Sandow, 1898, the very first bodybuilder. Still got better abs than most people. Look, check those out. And the fig leaf, not, what's not to love? People think the Victorians were prudish, but they weren't. Now, the other attraction of bodybuilding when I was young is that you thought, hey, this will make me fascinatingly attractive to women. Well, that probably does work now because everybody's used to seeing washboard abs and muscles all over the place. But back in 1977, it was considered kind of disgusting and it gave me no opportunities attracting women at all. And check this out. This is the original Colds Gym, Venice Beach. This is where bodybuilding was really born. This is where superhero movies were born. This is where the Marvel Universe was created. Amazing. 